Hello hey. and welcome to Up at Noon Live at 5 or whatever time it is where you are. I'm Brian Altano. With me is Max Scoville. Hey, what's up? We're having a very uh, a, a very special moment for him today. It is his 21st birthday. It Happy was going to be my 21st birthday, but when you adjust it for how long 2020 has been, I'm actually turning 34. That's good. Which is, that's yeah. A, that's a good age. You I was excited about having my, my first beer, but apparently I'm going to be just having ibuprofen and going to bed at 9.15. So. You will probably be about 60 by the end of this show. Uh, Max, uh, when you turn 34, you're allowed to pretend you're a teenager to host a toy show with your friend. Oh, yeah. Did you see that comment from that guy who was like, "This these guys have been cosplaying as teenagers for 20 years too long here at IGN. Stop talking about Baby Yoda. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry that we don't wear like old cardigans and neckties to talk about the hottest new gaming systems. What do you, what yeah. do you want? Uh, speaking of which, uh, I cannot believe we're actually almost here. But uh, next week, two next gen consoles launch or three, actually, the uh, Xbox Series S, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, all within just a few days uh, here in the States and, and many places all over the world. Uh, and we're obviously incredibly excited. Embargoes are starting to trickle out. Um, we can say that uh, IGN is not only reviewing, covering uh, all of the big games and accessories along with those things, but also uh, we'll be, be reviewing all of the consoles themselves, which is a sort of a tricky thing to do because consoles are, uh, it's a moving target, right? This, the, the console that you buy next week, assuming you're getting one, um, will not be the same thing you play two or three years from now. So IGN will probably reflect that, and I'm sure other outlets will too. But in the meantime, a uh, huge embargo lifted this morning for the Xbox Series S and the Series X. Um, and uh, IGN's Ryan McCaffrey reviewed the Series X. Uh, he gave it an eight. Uh, and our friends all over the industry did as well. So uh, we figured we'd do just a little roundup of what people are saying about this system. Uh, as we all know, the Series X has had sort of an interesting year. Um, I think it came out swinging last year at the Game Awards the first time we heard about it. Uh, we saw the sort of obelisk tower look of it. And, you know, people made jokes about sort of, you know, unassuming it was and how it just looks like a PC tower. Uh, and then the big conversation started to happen around games um, and what it could do, what it couldn't do, what it would have at launch. Uh, obviously, Halo Infinite was the big one. Uh, we saw that with Microsoft's showcase in August. And uh, people kind of dumped on that one. Um, for various reasons. So they kind of put it back in the oven for a while. Um, uh, you, you all know about the Rocky Road, about the development of that. Um, so here we are with the Series X launching this Tuesday, November 10th. And um, it doesn't really have a huge lineup of games lined up for it, but it's the most powerful video game system ever made and tremendously backwards compatible and super easy and snappy to use, apparently. So yeah, let's dig into uh, some of the quotes of what people are saying about this system. We'll start with uh, IGN's Ryan McCaffrey, because, you know, home team advantage. Um, IGN says, uh, we can only assume that the Xbox Series X will wow us with new and spectacular next-gen games eventually, because now there isn't much to judge it on right now. Compared directly to the PlayStation 5 specs, it flat out gives you more power for the same price. It's going to be a joy to see what developers do with it in the coming years. I think that's um, that's a huge thing is that this is in the same way that Microsoft's scooping up a bunch of studios. Uh, making a super powerful console that'll have like some legs on it is a great way of future proofing for what is coming down the pipe. Like it it might be a couple of years until we get some some really impressive games that fully take advantage of what the Series X is capable of. But like that's that's OK. Like I'd rather have like something that's super powerful out of the box that doesn't have games than you know, have something that feels underpowered in three years, you know? Right, right. No, exactly. Um, I think another interesting thing there, too, is that we, these systems might not exactly be readily available next week when a bunch of big third-party games start rolling out. And so we won't really know exactly um, where the best place to play those games are. But I suspect, given the power advantage, um, you would assume that third-party games would play and look best on the Series X eventually, right? I mean, until the mid-generation... Uh, upgrades start rolling out as they did yeah. last time around. Now we got um, a quote from uh, GameSpot here. Nothing really screams out as a killer app for the Series X right now. It's worth considering that buying a console is an investment for your gaming future and not just for what's available here and now. What we've seen thus far is an enticing showcase of the Series X's capabilities and also the tip of the iceberg for what can be achieved on the console. That's a that's a really good way of putting it, you know? Like yeah. there's honestly early adopting anything is is kind of a risky move. Uh you wind up with like you know, weird hiccups and, and strange stuff going on. And, uh, you know, you generally pay more for a, a less optimized experience, but like 
it's promising that everyone's kind of saying like, yeah, this this shows promise. This is a good this is a good future for the Series X. Yeah, I mean, there is that sort of guinea pig mentality of buying into uh, a, a console as an early ado adopter, or really any hardware. Like you are there to kind of like you know work out all the little problems and the kinks and stuff like that. Um, but the cool thing about this is that like this is a good opportunity to maybe go back and play a bunch of stuff you didn't you didn't play or replay stuff that you want to see look better. Um, but as of right now, like yeah, it's you know I, I think coupled with the stock issues hitting the PS5. Um, this is, I think, I think this is going to move some units and I think people are going to jump into this one. Yeah. Here's a, here's a quote from us gamer, a solid rebound from Microsoft. It's very powerful. It's backwards. Compatibility is impressive. And the Xbox game pass is second to none. That said, the Xbox series X still lacks, lacks a true killer app, a consistent issue going back to last generation. Mm. Uh, let's honestly, this is, this is a huge thing compared to how the Xbox one launched where they were pitching it more as an entertainment console than a gaming console. And it forced you to buy a connect along with it. Like they've come a long way. Like yeah. I honestly am totally cool. If, if the thing they're putting out is just a, you know, technical move forward from what was working or what they finally got right about the, the Xbox one or, or, or I guess the one X or whatever, like mm -hmm. if it's an iterative step, that's not a bad thing. Um, they're not forcing you to buy any nonsense along with it. And you know, that's a, that's a good move. The games will, yeah. the games will come. That is true. There isn't like a super cut of their E3 presentation where they're just saying TV, 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 sports, 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 right? They are about the games now, but they are still kind of caught with their pants down by not having like their, you know, Mario 64. I mean, I don't even know if they have their Rezo it's, gun, right? It's weird to say something about your pants being down in Mario 64 in the same sentence, but you know, that's... <laughs> uh next uh vice says uh it often felt like a marginally upgraded xbox one x with a handful of convenience features during the review window there was very little available to demonstrate what all this new hardware power is going to be useful for so that's what's interesting man like it's there right you have this like sleeping giant mm -hmm. basically this like tiger um and it's just not ready to tear anything apart yet. Which yeah, is I mean, kind of a we've, bummer. we've made this comparison a lot before, but it seems like getting a new phone or a new TV. You know, like yeah. I, I upgraded to a 4K TV last year and I did the sort of, you know, the sort of like finding cool stuff to put on it to see it. But I wasn't watching things I hadn't seen. I was watching things I had seen. So I can totally see. And especially with like the smart delivery stuff where they're like, oh, you, you bought a thing on Xbox. OK, well, you have it on Xbox Series X. Like it's the, yep. you know, it's like the PC mentality. But uh yeah, I'm excited. Again, I'm excited to see what they do with it eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, Gama Sutra says, think of it like upgrading a PC that already has thousands of available games that are ready to play, but with more to come. Um, so that's like an interesting thing here, because like if if this is your first Xbox, like, holy crap, this is an, this is an awesome thing oh, to yeah. jump in on. Like you're getting Game Pass, you're getting, and I imagine there'll be a code in the box for like a month or two or even more. Um, and you have this gigantic back catalog. Um, you have the EA Access stuff, uh, which they just announced they're adding, you know, Jedi Fallen Order to. They're consistently adding new games that, to that. I was uh, reading an article this morning about sort of like the upgrades that the next gen systems are going to get on launch. And, you know, you have a lot of stuff that's actually running at 1440p, like uh, Star Wars Squadrons, which just, just launched like a few weeks ago. And I played the first few hours and then was kind of like, put it away. And I'm like, I'm going to come back to this for next gen. So yeah, that's all awesome. And if, if, you know, if you've been playing these games for years, you get upgrades. If this is new to you, this is going to be a great day. But yeah, I mean, there's more to come. Like that's mm -hmm. that's what it's like to be. A, you I mean, know, a if you look at it this way, this is this is a thing that has super fast load times, a pretty big hard drive, and it has quick resume, so you can swap between a bunch of different games. So if you jump into Game Pass and you just like you know, you get a brand new super powerful console and you're like, I'm going to download 18 games and switch between them rapidly, like just a hyperactive kid. <laughs> you can do that. And it's you like, you won't, be, you won't be sitting there waiting for it to chug along and be like, you know, I mean, you might have to, it might take a minute to download, but that's like, I don't know, that's kind of, that's enticing. Like having ha <laughs> having the quick resume function on a, on a system that also allows you basically access to hundreds of games in a library for one monthly fee, like, that's 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 good good for gaming good for bad for ADD so yeah for sure um Eurogamer says Microsoft has indeed delivered an excellent next generation system but one that likely won't show its many strengths at launch a console is defined by its games and in that sense I still feel that I barely know the machine at all damn that's a that was one of the I would say one of the colder quotes out there but justifiable mm -hmm. I mean on a similar note, like IGN gave the Nintendo Switch a six at launch. 
because it didn't really have much besides Breath of the Wild going on for it. And mm -hmm. then that is quickly been disproven like that's a you know wonderful console with a ton of stuff for it so you know sometimes you have to wait and see and also maybe reviewing a console at launch is a weird time to review it yeah no you're talking the switch one was really interesting because we reviewed it really based on a lot of the merits of what we expect from a console at least in the at the time which was you know uh a, a dynamic ui and themes and a media library that you can access and streaming platforms and apps um and the switch three and a half years later has still kind of like Nah, we don't care about any of that. And so you, you know, it's that is a that is a handheld and television game console, tried and true. But this is a big media device. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's going for different things there. We we put out a list the other day on IGN of all the media apps coming day one. There's a ton of stuff. So, you know, if this is gonna be outside of your game machine, your dedicated, you know, app streaming box, you got that going for you too. Yeah. So moving on. Um I don't know about you guys, but there's one thing I'm excited to do tomorrow night, which is go see Marvel's Eternals. Yes. Is, is a sentence I would say if 2020 had gone according to plan, but obviously <laughs> it did not. It did not it go did according not. to plan. Uh, we've had a very weird year. There have been a lot of strange things going on. Uh, I mean, obviously COVID. And uh, I figured we could take a minute. This maybe is kind of sad, but run down a bunch of the movies that should have been out this year, but which probably aren't coming out so much uh yeah Mar Marvel's many Eternals. of which we would have seen by now you know marvel's honestly, eternals like, like we probably would have gone to a midnight showing for that last night that had the yeah. release date of november 6 2020 uh it is now pushed to november 5th 2021 a year from today uh and also we don't even have a trailer for that nope like literally all we've seen is the logo some leaked set photos a leaked marvel legends action figure of what of appears villain. to be the villain yeah <laughs> but it's kind of it's kind of odd to just be so like a movie was supposed to be out we have seen nothing about it that's yeah that's crazy so before we move on we're gonna get into some movies on this list that um weirdly already got promotional merchandise hitting store shelves which creates this sort of alternate 2020 reality in a much more sort of deeper weirder sense in that um there were ghostbusters and wonder woman's toys out there but eternals is like i think the second they got caught wind that things were going awry this year they put that one back in the bottle um, yeah. So yeah. Well, one one movie we probably we probably should just go to, to the next Marvel thing. But one movie that I'm I'm personally the most bummed that we don't get is Dune, which I was yeah. just incredibly excited about. Uh, Denny Villeneuve's um, you know epic sci-fi retelling of Frank Herbert's beloved sci-fi novel. Uh, the good news is I I I have been horrible. I've been procrastinating about you know finishing up the audiobook, and I I'm really I I got time to do that now because that got pushed from December 18th of this year to October 1st of next year. So that's, I mean, me, even one, as like a legendary procrastinator, I think I'm, I'm finally going to get through Dune and then I, I'll go to the movie and I go, I understand what that is. That one hurt too, because there was, obviously there's a lot of back and forth this year with um, theaters and uh, theater goers and movie studios, honestly, about what could go into theaters and what couldn't. Um, and Dune was one of those things that, you know, it came after, uh, you know, we saw, a couple movies attempt to revitalize theaters and stuff like that. Tenet specifically was supposed to be the thing that got people back in the theaters. Christopher Nolan's sci-fi epic, mm -hmm. you know, this sprawling sort of uh, insane that movie was... that we'll, we'll get to see yeah. on, on home video and DVD and Blu-ray in, in a month or so. But but I almost guarantee you that that sort of, uh, that was Warner Brothers testing the waters. And for the price that they've sp spent making these and marketing these movies, they I think they just want to sort of wait until it's a little bit of a safer bet. Uh, I think one of the first movies that really, like we really kind of, realized this was this was serious was black widow when right. that was that seemed like a i mean that's the the first is that the first marvel movie post endgame no there was a spider-man in there somewhere but like this is this is a big you know major mcu like this was going to be sort of kicking off the next phase yes. um and w again that got toys that got action figures that got tons of merchandising and you know marketing and trailers trailers and everything, everything yeah. and then it just that's not happening. That is coming out May 7th, 2021, as opposed to May 1st of this year. So it's weird. That movie would be coming out on Blu-ray by now, but instead yeah. we haven't even seen it. Yeah. I mean, and obviously that's, you know, uh, we, we saw what happened to Black Widow in, in the last time we saw Black Widow, but this was the sort of like the, the passing the torch to Florence Pugh, who's an amazing actress. Um, you know, go watch, uh, pretty much every movie she's in, but specifically Midsummer is awesome. Um, but also this is one of those movies that I think people were like 
kind of apathetic about, but totally would have gone to see. But now mm. it's going to, I think, approach, it, it could go either way, right? Where people have gone so long without a Marvel movie, which many may argue, you know, was a, a good decision um, accidentally. Uh, yeah. Or people so, might be just burned out on it. The one thing is with Marvel stuff, obviously, because they're always building up this whole universe, they can't shuffle things around really. Like mm -hmm. they have to delay the entirety of it because everything is sort of one step ahead of the next. Like everything's kind of building up to the next things. And obviously we're going to get uh, some new shows on Disney plus soon enough, but it's going to be interesting to see how they, they're, I mean, they're probably, they've got a big cork board behind the scenes with yarn sticking out and they're probably rearranging a few note cards to be like, Oh, that thing we were teasing in Falcon and winter soldiers was supposed to be leading up to Thor love and thunder, but that got pushed for yada, 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 and so forth and whatnot. Um, but other movies that are just standalone movies, you'd think that they would have a little more wiggle room, and I guess they do. But Candyman, uh, about the the wonderful like rebooted slasher fic about the guy with the bees and the hook for a hand, is mm -hmm. uh, that got moved from June twelfth to August twenty twenty August twenty seventh of next year. So yeah, that's which I, I'm super bummed about this one. Um, I I really like the original movie. I'm a huge horror fan. Uh, I understand why this happened. The director specifically said like I want people to share this experience in a room. That's right? a, that's a good point. Cause like stuff like Dune, which is a big, huge, you know, like that's a big screen production. I think that's on a similar note to like horror movies. You need to see that like in a, like that's a, that again, horror movies are scarier if you see them in a room full of people who all jump at the same time. Yeah. And it's more of an, a, an experience as if you watch it at home, like you can be checking your phone or, you know. Yeah. Whatever. I was, I was really hoping for otherwise for this one because uh horror has had a pretty good track record of going direct to home video during coronavirus yeah uh, uh, but it is what it is yeah uh one movie we've seen uh get kicked a bunch of times which is still currently slated to come out this year barely wonder woman 1984 uh has a december 25th 2020 release date moved up from june 5th of 2020 uh so that's over over half a year and that's been i think they've been v like very slowly pushing that forward because again there's wonder woman stuff in stores like i'm sure they mm -hmm. were really banking on wonder woman costumes being a big thing this halloween but halloween didn't happen either so uh what are you <laughs> gonna do that is heavily rumored to have another delay uh, yeah and again no like that's coming out that's also something patty jenkins has said that that is like a, a big screen movie like that is meant to be seen on a large scale and i you mm -hmm. can't you can't blame her um Another superhero movie and an entirely different sort of end of the spectrum. Morbius, the Sony Spider-Man spinoff about Jared Leto as the living vampire. That was slated for July 31st. Jury, I can't, why can't I say the names of the numbers? July 31st of this year. That got pushed to March 19th of next year. So going to be a minute. I'll be honest. I'm, I was, I was kind of, I, this seems like a movie that should have come out in March anyway. Mm -hmm. like I, I would have i mean i i would out of you know morbius curiosity i would have watched this at home <laughs> on streaming uh because i wasn't doing a lot this uh, summer but um then there's the king's man the prequel uh to the the you know all the kingsman movies which are all super fun i remember watching the first one and being like i don't really get it and then watching it again and it totally grew on me second one's a blast it kind of underperformed but they're really fun this is the prequel this one from april 10th 2020 to april 2nd 2021 that's almost a full year um, again, this is all under the impression that things will be okay by April next year, or at least okay enough to go see movies, right? This can always get delayed, but mm -hmm. knock wood. Uh, here's a big one that obviously they wanted to bank on the theatrical experience, A Quiet Place Part 2. I was not even wild about the first Quiet Place, but that is one of the most memorable movie-going yes. experiences I've ever had. Like, just angrily glaring at somebody for like trying to open a bag of chips or like the fact that we sat down and there was just like somebody brought their kids and we're like oh this but they better not like don't it's, don't make it, a noise like this is it's worth mentioning this movie was supposed to launch march 20th which was like a week and a half into the pandemic there were billboards for this movie everywhere mm -hmm. everywhere like this there's, was the there's still one up in, in san francisco yeah. which is sort of fittingly yeah. something you would see in the quiet place universe to be like, yep. Oh, that's when everything stopped. Uh, this one this got one, moved to April 23rd, 2021. Uh, full, uh, again, full year and a month. This one I'm mad about this one. I think actually got delayed once already. Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to say that was supposed to come out in May initially, which wasn't a coronavirus delay. That was just whatever else. Uh, right. and that's obviously they were trying to capitalize off the momentum of uh, King of the monsters that was slated for a November 20th release date this year doing the whole thanksgiving thing uh and then that got pushed to may 21st of next year so really bummed about that that's another one got toys that leaked uh big king kong toys that people flipped the back over and saw you know uh, action sequences on the back of the boxes like 
there's you know there's spoilers on car back so keep an eye out for that um then there's fast nine which people were like i remember this was this was when do you remember this like people were really like okay this is for real like w when they came straight out and they were like we're delaying this movie by a full year may 22nd to may 28th um because again this, they were like yeah we no, this, this was the first big one this was the one yeah. where it was like I think a lot of us thought like maybe this will be solved by this fall. The fact that they pushed that a full year mm -hmm. really, I think it, it's also, this is one of the, this, this franchise, obviously each movie that comes out uh, does better than the previous one. And it also performs huge in China. I think it's like, it's like neck and neck with Avengers and a few other things as far as like the highest grossing movies there. People obviously love to get together, go get excited about the cars. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, that got pushed from May 22nd this year to May 28th of next year. Uh, another one, this is, this yeah. one was struck me as super weird. I think this was kind of realizing how serious this stuff was. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife was going to be a big 4th of July movie, a big summer movie, July 10th, I guess not 4th of July at all, but like, a, you know, a big summer tent pole movie. And that even, that got lots of action figures that got like when there's merchandise in stores and they're like gearing up for it, they really just want to sink their teeth in and get people when they're excited. That got pushed to June 11th of next year. Yeah, so you know what I was saying? like all the all the kids on the press tour for this movie the next year they're gonna have like mustaches and everything. You know, dude, Everybody Stranger Things season four is gonna be weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> gonna be weird. There's gonna be a bunch of like 30. 20 years old. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, and then this one I'm actually um, fascinated by Snake Eyes, the GI Joe cinematic universe kickoff, um, mm -hmm. starting with obviously the coolest member of the GI Joes, the Ninja who doesn't talk. <laughs> uh, that got moved from October 23rd of this year to October 22nd. That one, I think they managed to really do something smart by clamping down any promotional stuff. Cause like, the, yeah. here's the thing, like I've seen the wonder woman, 1984 trailer so many times. I've seen the ghostbusters afterlife trailer so many times, black widow, same deal. We're like, when those movies finally come out, I'm kind of going to be sick of looking at them, but I haven't seen anything from snake eyes. I think we saw like maybe a costume photos, but like yeah. at the very least, yeah. if that movie isn't actually coming out on schedule, if they drop a trailer, that'll be uh, pretty exciting. Like, I mean, we got really excited about the Dune trailer and that's when we thought it was coming out this year. But like, you know, that's, yeah. trailers are fun. They're like mini movies that you can watch on your phone at home. And and, uh, <laughs> and finally, you mentioned before about the MCU and the sort of like, all you know, all the trains being on the same track and like one of them stalling and the ones behind it. Um, they were shooting back-to-back -back sequels to the Halloween uh, pre- what, pre re Requel, reboot, sequel? What it's was that? A re it's a rebookquel. It's what it is. <laughs> yeah, um, which uh, many of you saw two years ago. Um, that was supposed to come out right before Halloween this year, October 16th. Uh, we got a teaser for it just the other day. Uh, it is now coming out October 15th, 2021. So a full year on that, meaning that the movie behind it is a full year after that. Um, man, yeah, that's it a bummer. Is, it's weird. It's weird. But uh, hey, on the bright side, whenever this finally does whenever things finally get back to normal if that i hope that happens or something like normal 2021 or 2022 or whatever the hell it is is going to be an incredible movie year so so many movies are you kidding one me? of these yeah. days these movies are going to come out and there's going to be a whole bunch of them and then there's also going to be like probably a weird stretch where they haven't been able to make a bunch of movies and then we'll probably get like weird animated features or like you know yeah shows um, for, like an avengers where they all are just talking on zoom so uh, let us know in the comments what movies you're excited for. We actually, we skipped a few, like stuff like Spiral, the uh, sort of Saw spinoff with Chris Rock and a bunch of other things. Oh man, I um, forgot. Yeah, there's, we, this yeah. is by no means definitive because literally all the movies that came out this year got pushed except for Tenet, I guess. Now, uh, one thing you can definitely do next week, assuming you have a pre-order, is purchase a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or S. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Sony put out a uh, statement saying that you won't be able to walk into a store and buy one of these things. You can only sort of purchase them online or, uh, I guess, pick up your pre-orders that you made back on the one day this year where they accidentally like opened the floodgates on those. So if you were sleeping during that time or you looked away from your phone for five seconds, you know, RIP, it kind of sucks. Um, but, uh, if you're still not <laughs> sold on the PlayStation 5, you will be able to go to a store, specifically Best Buy, and actually see a demo kiosk uh, in the wild, which um, you and I haven't actually gotten to do that yet. In a normal year, there would have been preview events and uh, E3s and Comic-Cons. We probably would have seen some PS5s here and there. Uh, but if you want to see a PS5 up close in person to see how big it is, uh, you can go do that in the Best Buy in America and Canada right now. Uh, some people are actually taking pictures of those kiosks as we speak. 
and they're cool yeah. looking. It's yeah. It, here, we got a photo of one here. It looks it's it's apparently actually running Spider Man. The interesting thing about this is. I guess in an effort to keep people from getting their dirty little hands on everything there, you cannot experience the dual sense firsthand, which honestly, right. That's a bummer. Cause that's one of its big, you know, bells and whistles, but also it's probably for the best to discourage people from, you know, putting their hands on something during yeah. the blue season so this, this year, especially. So this, uh, this demo kiosk shows off, uh, some pictures of the accessories and, uh, you know, the, the console itself running the hardware itself running on a, on a, on a 4k TV, presumably, which is great. I imagine it's just like cycling through demos and stuff like that. But here's the thing. If you look closely, this console is actually encased in this sort of like hard plastic bubble, probably for safety measures for theft measures and a bunch of other things. Uh, and that's kind of a problem because it doesn't really have a lot of room to breathe. Now this specifically the PS5 by design is gigantic um, so that it can breathe, right? We all had PS4s and PS4 Pros and most of us will tell you that by the end of its life cycle uh, or especially playing big games like, you know, The Last of Us, God of War, um, that thing sounded like a helicopter, yeah. right? That was a running joke. I mean, I think it's a helicopter if you get like a pebble or something in there. I was going to go with the jet engine, but you know, yeah. <laughs> the point is taken. But yeah, so if you have this thing that's that's meant to ventilate and then you lock it in a, a plastic box that doesn't have air holes, uh, yeah, what you might kind of expect is... Uh, is this. It, so yeah, yeah uh, Twitter user Zaliak was in a Best Buy and said, there's a Series X and a PS5 on display at my Best Buy and the Series X is actually way smaller than I expected, which is kind of funny. The PS5 though, goddamn, it's a big boy. Uh, and they notice um, upon further infection, uh, in, infection inspection, uh, the screen had a message on it stating that the PS5 was too hot to use. Like if you've ever owned a mobile phone, like an iPhone or something like that, and you've been out on a hot day, or you know you're like just sitting out in in a park or something like that, you put your phone down, you go to pick it up, it might give you that warning. This is happening here now. Before everybody like jumps down the throat of this thing and that says that uh, you know it has overheating issues, we can't confirm any of that yet. But we can confirm that if you put the PS5 in a plastic bubble, which feels like so such a dumb thing for them to do, like um, maybe a metal cage or something. Yeah, or just, you know I, anything. I don't know. Yeah, let it let it breathe. Um, and I remember a few weeks ago there was a lot of rumors kicking around about how hot the Series X would get right and people were doing sort of thermo tests on it and stuff like that checking the temperature making sure that this wouldn't be a problem uh and it turned out to be you know nothing um this is a big system and so i think a lot of people are going to either put it on the floor next to their tvs or try to jam it into their entertainment centers I mean, in some way i've been saying this but i think this generation of of consoles is going to sort of change the way that we buy entertainment centers I and mean, we've kind of already yeah. seen that a little bit like it's it's interesting like if you were to buy you know, an entertainment center back in the seventies, it would be outfitted for like record players or like, you know, stereo receivers and, you know, big bookshelf speakers. And and then like, I stayed in a, in a hotel a couple years ago and I thought it was really funny because they had wall mounted a, you know, normal 16, nine flat screen HD TV, but they had this weird old wooden hutch that clearly used to have an old uh, CRT TV in it. It's had this whole big, you know, space for it. So they just shoved the fridge in there. So you had this weird like <laughs> entertainment center, you'd open up and there'd be a fridge inside that. Um, I think we're probably going to see um, entertainment consoles that have, first of all, a lot more space in both directions to support the, you know, the Series X and the and the PS5, but also probably a little more, a little more breathing room. Like maybe they yeah. forego that weird, like little over under thing where the cords go in the back and just be like, eh, let's let it breathe. Uh, yeah. There's also, the, you know, I know that some people will like kit bash IKEA stuff and insert PC fans in the back to help, you know, Ooh, help cool smart. that off. But uh, yeah, this is this is kind of wild. Um, so yeah, the the PS5 getting too hot. I mean, obviously this is, I I I feel like given how much they've hyped up how this is a machine designed to keep itself cool, and the whole reason it looks the way it does is for that very reason. But maybe don't put it in a plastic terrarium like it's a frog you caught in yes. the creek. Yes, <laughs> and don't put a frog in the that that you caught in a bubble like that either. Give, don't catch give frogs; your... they're endangered, man. Leave them alone. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just a PSA, we'll, we will obviously be looking more into this. Uh, and, you know, like this is what always happens when systems launch, problems arise. And so hopefully this isn't something that uh, we see day to day when we're actually using these $500, $400 consoles in the wild. But um, in the meantime, uh, we will keep digging into this kind of stuff. But if you're getting a next gen console next week, give it some space, give it a little breathing room, let yeah. it breathe. And um, leave those frogs alone. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing that you can do uh, if you can't get a PS5, 
and you want a little space to breathe, is buy some PS5 clothes. Uh, the official PlayStation gear store announced today that they are uh, updating with a slew of new products, uh, much to the chagrin, anger, and dismay of their audience who hasn't been able to secure an actual physical PS5 console pre-order, but are now being enticed with PS5 sweatshirts, bomber jackets, hats, and, and, and gamer pants. We we'll take you now live to the official PlayStation Gear <laughs> Store, uh, which, you know, if, if I you could you could buy, well, games or systems for the price of some of these. They're they're not they're okay, I guess. It's just kind of weird, you know, because we can't yeah. get we can't get a, the consoles in. But here's all this stuff. It's it's definitely an odd choice. Uh, I feel like this is the kind of thing you can flex if you have a pipeline of consoles hitting stores on a basis that all of your audience is satiated and happy and able to secure Wait, hold, hold the hardware on. that they what want. The f there's a ski suit? Really? What the heck? There's a PlayStation ski suit. It's an official, oh, it, it's a $350. This is, a, this is wacky. Wow. Okay, so. That so is, that's $50 less than I paid for my PS5. I got the digital edition. So I could have. Yeah. And they also have cool stuff. They got the PlayStation model kit. They got the Bloodborne Android. But but really the PS5 stuff is uh is is an odd choice. Yeah. Um and so hey. I, I would say like I'm a, I'm a big fan of joggers, right? Like you know those funny pants that are like a, a marriage between jeans and 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 uh, you know sweatpants. Mm -hmm. uh, these are weird. Uh if you want to pull up the joggers, they have like this big kind of gaudy stripe on the side. They're 80 bucks, which is you know sort of expensive for for something that you're basically just going to lounge around the house in um, the back, the Timbuktu backpack. I have a Timbuktu backpack. I've never paid $230 for a backpack before. That's, that's on the high end. I think sure. those, those are usually like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I was reading the responses on Twitter to this, to the official PlayStation, you know, account tweeting this out and people were just like, Hey, that's great. Where's the PS five? Like I, you guys are selling baby t-shirts with the DualSense wireless controller on it, you have- How, how, how many, many children do you think are getting this t-shirt and with like a sad note that says like, we'll get we'll get you one when we can. This was the best we could do. Sorry, yeah. we couldn't get you. There's, you know, there's the hat- I pre-ordered the PS5 a... and all I got was this lousy t-shirt because the pre-order situation was a real nightmare. It also, this feels like the way they did Baby Yoda merchandise after the show first launched where they were kind of caught with their pants down and they just- Put a bunch of clip art on shirts. Like this is mostly just logos and and you know wireframe drawings of the controller. Yeah, they're not like, they're not terrible, but also it's just kind of a, oh, this here. Look at is this a throw blanket? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's a whole throw blanket for doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hey, if you if you don't get a PlayStation Five, they there's a lot of PlayStation Five gear you can sit around the house <laughs> and not playing PS Five with. So that's a that's true. That's a whole thing. Um. All right, so moving on here, um, we have a special treat. Um, we have a world, not world, it's not a world premiere. It's not even an exclusive. <laughs> I pre-ordered the, the PlayStation 5 media remote. And this is such a boring device that they didn't even include it when they sent all the PlayStation 5s and the dual senses and the 3D headphones and the, the, the dual camera webcams. They sent all those out to reviewers to check out. They were like... I don't need the remote. It's fine. But I got the remote and I shot an unboxing video. So let's take a look at this. The world premiere exclusive world right. premiere. Hey everybody, Max Scoble here for IGN. It is a very exciting time in the world of video games. We've got a whole bunch of brand new consoles launching and a lot of you, I'm sure, have them pre-ordered. Now, we have big old reviews of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series up there along with some of the key accessories, but one that didn't get sent out to the press is the PlayStation 5 Media Remote. And I pre-ordered one for some reason. And it's here! So prepare yourself for probably the least exciting unboxing of anything to come out this generation, but without further ado, let's take a look. Why not? So as you can see, it is uh, it comes in a box, which is... It's, pr it's pretty small. It, they use tape to, to close it. I have some other remotes here so we can do a, a size comparison in a moment, but I'm just gonna rip this open. Oh, look at that. The, little, the hook thing comes out. There's a handy tab to pull it out. Uh, comes in this sort of inner box here. 
Oh, look at that. This is this is exciting. This is really exciting, actually. It it comes with batteries. So we got two AA batteries. Oh, here it is. Here's the moment of truth. Here's what we get. This is it. This is my first time physically touching a piece of official PlayStation 5 hardware. And it's, wow. Look at that, it's nice. So yeah, you can see I have my uh, my Roku TV remote, which is just the right size to fall right between the couch cushions. And this one looks like it's gonna be in some good company. Um, and then here's the other remote for my sound bar. And as you can see, if I'm fumbling around in the dark, they're all pretty close. Now, one thing that is actually pretty interesting about this is that there is the little voice control microphone button at the top. If uh, the PlayStation 5's voice recognition is as cool as it's cracked up to be, this will be handy because I can say, let's watch Netflix or wh whatever, and it'll hopefully open it up. I would test it, but I don't, I don't have a PlayStation yet. Someday, I hope. And uh, for streaming stuff, we've got Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube. So those are the ones that are definitely on there. There's some other ones coming up, uh, but I'm guessing you probably can't reprogram these to do other things. There's the play. This is, that, this is it, man. This is the remote. I don't know how to open it. How does it... There's a, there's a button. Oh wow, there's a secret release. That's that's interesting. Most of the other one, other remotes just, you know, just click open like you just slide a little box. So clearly, it's not only it's not only the PS5's hard drive that is cutting edge, brand new proprietary tech. They figured out a new way for you to put batteries in the remote. And look at that, they're official Sony batteries and everything. What a thrill! I legit didn't know that Sony made batteries. So there it is. Look at that. There, that's, there, there it is. That is the, how does it, how do you get it on? You just click it? Is that it? You kidding me? I'm, am I screwing this up? This is a weirdly complicated remote. Do I, do I get it? How do you get it on? Anyway, there you have it. The official unboxing of the PlayStation 5 MIDI remote. You saw it here first. It's here. Look at that. I got the cover on. And all it took was a lot of fumbling and trying on camera. Wow. Anyway, for better unboxings than this one, keep it locked to IGN. God, That's right, what? baby. Look at that bad boy. Look at that little sleek thing. What? A time to be alive. I, I can't believe it personally. You know, it's actually, it's smaller than I expected it would be <gasps> considering what happened. The PlayStation button is a, it, or the, the logo is a button, which makes sense because that's a button I push constantly on the normal controller. So I don't know did why you, it wouldn't you just, be, but. You just figured that out now? You just, you filled the three minute unboxing video for this thing. I, did you watch that thing? That was clearly a rush job. But anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, like, I don't, it's, it's, that's a, it's surprising because the PS5 is the biggest video game console ever made. I was hoping that would be the biggest media remote ever made. Just like I think it'd be great you know. if they, they made it really, really small, like uh, <laughs> like Will Ferrell's phone in Zoolander, just have like a little, like a little dongle that you can't, you can't, you can't even find it anywhere. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like I, it's gonna be really weird. Like I pre-ordered a PS5, but again, like I don't believe that's real. Like I don't trust it, I guess. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really, really, it's gonna really just, just I saw it's gonna suck if I just, have a ps5 remote right, and it's like five months until i get a ps5 <laughs> what are you doing oh yeah you got a dual shock or sense i did and i just dropped it behind my desk so i'm not going to show it on camera but i will say there was a bunch of people who uh i saw on social media so saying uh that they got all of their accessories in but they also got an email from like amazon or gamestop or walmart saying that their ps5 would not be delivered on launch date oh. which just sucks like yeah. i just i want to take a moment to say my heart goes out to everybody who a first start we'll start with you could not pre-order the system at all like that sucks this year has been terrible and you deserved it especially i saw people who had been saying like i've been saving up for this thing for eight nine months or two years and i couldn't get one so i have money sitting there um b people who pre-ordered it and are getting it delayed c people who pre-ordered it are getting it delayed but it got a bunch of controllers and accessories that they can't really use for anything you can hook so, up your, I mean, your ps5 controller to the pc right now 
um you know and i guess yeah that's fun does it, play, it doesn't play like horizon cool, cool dual sense stuff or anything no but yeah no i always i always say this like we argue about uh how cool consoles are like which is better but like at the end of the day both of the consoles are extremely boring if you're just if you just have the con like can you imagine if someone's like you get a console <laughs> but you're stuck in the dead like you're like that dude at the end of quantum of solace they just say here's your ps5 good luck and you're like i don't have any games and also why am i in the desert i'm gonna i'm gonna drink yeah. the ps5 we'll drink that liquid no, metal a, um, they're, they're you know it's a paperweight if you don't have accessories or accessories or vice versa yeah um so uh one of the things that you and i are very very excited about is uh demon souls now uh bloodborne is one of my favorite games of all time one of your favorite games of all time we both got really into dark souls 3 this year i feel like you and i have been um we're weird from soft fans because like we've gotten super into bloodborne and then gone around and kind of like picked at the the stuff that we missed before that and after that which has been fun right um you, you know, know played... demon souls is going to be our first our first from soft game that we are there day one knowing how much of an ass kicking to expect but being like yeah. we're ready for it and so many people will beat that game before we do but we're still yeah gonna, we're gonna tough it out we're gonna try our hardest um, yeah it, it's you know it's obviously it's a remake of a god how old is the game now just it's 10 years like 10 years old um and uh this is you know Wait, from the same no, studio 11 years 11 it's years old. Yeah, yeah it's old yeah um this is from blue point the same studio that did uh the shadow of the colossus remake and a bunch of other stuff last year they tweeted uh this like crazy paragraph of just like every single playstation exclusive game ever made uh in a teaser and we ended up getting demon souls which i'm super happy about because this is a FromSoft game or from soft adjacent game that i never played you never played so and this is a launch game for the ps5 it is hypothetically ps5 exclusive if you don't count the fact that it's a remake uh this is not one of those like kind of cross-platform games like miles morales or spider-man remastered um so yeah. day and date we're gonna be get with the play this we saw the trailer with the ps5 reveal and today we found out uh that the character creator mode in this game is insanely Look, detailed I, here's the thing i don't want to throw shade at FromSoft because they make incredibly wonderfully like complex games that are just phenomenal to play. But as far as I think like graphically, there, there's always like a little bit of like a rough edge to them. Like they right. always, you know, you run past a torso and it just kind of drags along like a weird rag doll behind you. Or it's just, you get really close on a cape and you're just like, oh, that's kind of like a weird texture there. You you know, you stab a skeleton and he gets stuck in a wall and he just goes like, ah. Yeah, just I mean, it's, I, I like it because I feel like they're, they're not so hung up on making everything photorealistic. And because of that, you have like a much more interesting experience. Uh, this, if you ask me what game this is from, I don't think I would guess Demon Souls. Like these, no these, way. Uh, these screenshots are phenomenal, and these are also. Um, I had to, I had to scale these down from 4K because they're just like you can see these people's pores. This dude has like this dude like needs a one of those like Biore strips or whatever. Like he's got like oily an oily nose here. Um, here's some of the presets. Uh, these are obviously like kind of. Oh wait, am I not? Am I sharing the wrong window? Hold on a second. I'm totally screwing this up. Let me do this. Give me a second. I promise. We have we have pictures of Dark Souls people, Demon Souls. I will say, those. you know, like we were saying before, no one has ever played a FromSoft game, or especially not back in the day, and been like, they do the best faces. They do the most realistic. No, faces. I, I feel like so many people go into those games and they're just like, well, my dude is gonna have frostbite on the nose and like a weird blue chin, and his eyes will <laughs> stick out of his head, and also he'll have like a page boy haircut. Uh, but he, these people look like people, and obviously it's you know it's screenshots posted on the sony blog so they're you know they're they're they wanted to show the good ones but like god damn yeah this looks amazing i'm 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 kind of i'm kind of floored like the, it has no right to look this good the original like okay so i i've 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 played through bloodborne six seven times at this point i i beat it i platinumed it on new game plus five last year when i did that the character i made looked like like a sick woman <laughs> like, yeah no 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 i i have so the character i played in dark souls 3 i do that thing where i'm just like yeah i'm just gonna screw around and try out a new character and i'll like make the worst character and then by like i'm like you know 70 hours in and i'm like i really should have spent more time making a genuinely good character my character at one point was um he was ignatius riley from a confederacy of dunces like he was this <laughs> very heavy set man who had like a pirate sword and like a weird cape and like giant like a hat and he would just like awkwardly somersault around and just you know yeah. fight monsters and stuff but yeah i think i'm gonna try i don't know i, I kind of want to try to do the thing that i would i usually do in like a you know like a bethesda game is to try to make the best possible 
you know, person I can. Also, it's all like a totally, it's totally a pointless because you're going to wind up wearing whatever helmet you want or like a weird hat or like something that boosts your, you know, ice resist or whatever. Uh, but yeah, the, yeah. I mean, our, our friend Colin Stevens at IGN, awesome dude, uh, tweeted out a picture of one of the photos with a meme next to it that's, you know, Jane Lynch saying, I'm going to create an avatar that is so hot, <laughs> which is like, you would never think to do that with a FromSoft game, but now you can do that. You could make sexy looking characters. Did, I, did, I did see somebody on the... All these different settings you can do with their, you know, basically, it, this is a very robust it's gonna be good. I, I love that people use character creators as like a, as a, as an art form. There was somebody yeah. who posted like the most like strikingly realistic Samuel L. Jackson in Bloodborne, which is like, I don't... <laughs> I, I remember that. Yeah, that was great. They nailed I his hair. This this mother mother effing snakes out of this mother <laughs> effing forbidden forest. <laughs> That was so good. I imagine people are going to be doing that with this and making like if you look at the uh, all the like classic wrestling games, they have that thing, the cause, right? The K C A W's creator wrestlers, where people go in and they make every like uh, celebrity ever made. You have the ability to do that now in Demon Souls on day one on the PS5. Like you can go in there and make Macho Man Randy Savage and play the yeah, entire game. So better, best of all, this has got something. This is I like that we're focusing on the character creator, which the original had. The original did not have a photo mode which this does and it looks phenomenal uh yeah. this is i mean sony's been doing this with all the first party games i feel like it's one of those things that they're just like this tricks people who are playing the game into marketing our games for free put it in all the games and like <laughs> yeah this is this will do it um yeah no it's, it's also it's going to be interesting because one reason that they i don't think had a photo mode in bloodborne is that that's a persistent online game or you know Generally, like I, I feel like photo mode is going to have to be an offline thing because, you know, if you stop the entire game to take like an epic screenshot mid boss fight, like that, the little glow of the dark angel who's helping you fight the big dragon or whatever is going to be like, hurry it up, man. Like, come on, what are we doing? Taking selfies? Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 kind of awesome. I do wonder how they'll do that. Like, because that's these are games that historically don't even really let you like pause. Right. But mm -hmm. No, I'm nope, I'm nope. pretty stoked about this. Like, it's gonna, it's. I mean, it's it's a ridiculously good looking game. Look at that, dude. I think that like I've been so uh, just kind of down on this year, and also like head down on like you know work and the election and all this other horse shit that I haven't really stopped <laughs> to go. Oh yeah, we're getting a remake of like a gorgeous, phenomenal FromSoft game in literally a week, like in s seven days from today. You and I will be texting each other, being like, "Did you did you fight the wet skeleton horse, man?" Yeah, or like, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited. I'm, yeah, oh, and man. like we said earlier, neither of us have played this game, so I'm, I'll be playing this game for the first time and then switching over to Miles Morales. And you know, I'll have a Series X in the house too. This is gonna be a good week coming. Up. I mean, so this like week, we mentioned so on the top of the show, today's my birthday. I forgot like three times this week. Like I just didn't because it's just a bad. It's a bad year. It's a bad week. It's just a bad time. So it's been election day that, for four days. Like, yeah. So the, the fact that, like, I guess you know, next week we get maybe PlayStation Fives or like we get new Xboxes. Like that's that's great. That's great. It's I awesome. Don't, you know, like it's I awesome. hope I hope that as many people that tried to get them can get them. It's just we all need some diversions. You know, like we all yeah, need. We do. Yeah. We do. It's just like I don't think you should bury your head in the sand all year because there's real stuff happening. But goddamn. We're getting new consoles and we get to play them and play new new mm -hmm. experiences and they're gonna be gorgeous and fun. And if not, then you know, like you have your old consoles or your PC or your Switch. There's a billion games coming out every day. We we did an entire list of all the movies that got delayed this year. Games somehow just kept crushing it and killing it this year. That's I will argue you could that you could email a game and everyone plays games can. alone. If you want to watch, if you want to watch a game get played with like two, 150 other people, you do that on Twitch. You don't go to a big room that sells popcorn like the movies. That's video true. Game, Although you can, awesome. I, I have seen some people rent out theaters to play Smash Brothers. Uh, it's it's like a hundred bucks. They're just giving those things away tonight. So uh, everyone in the chat is trying to guess my name. Izzy Busby says, "LOL, he is sixty nine years old." Nice. That's true. Nice. Yeah. Happy, happy Honestly, after birthday. this year, it feels like it. <laughs> you see these crow's feet? Hey, you know you you get those from smiling. So I do you? Oh yeah. yeah. So I will, if I die wrinkly, it's because I've been laughing. Or crying for most of my life, or not moisturizing, one of the above. Uh, uh, okay, so speaking of things that uh, will hopefully help this year get a little bit happier, a little bit more positive, 
a, a brand new episode of the Mandalorian drops tonight, which is awesome. I literally woke up in the middle of the night last week to watch the season two premiere, which did not at all let me down. I, I ran downstairs at 3 a.m. because I couldn't stop thinking about it, watched it, and then like fell asleep with a smile on my face. Uh, there's even more Star Wars coming this year, and it's not the Skywalker saga. It's not about Palpatine's granddaughter. Well, sort of. Uh, but the Lego Star Wars holiday special is coming, I believe, November 17th. Uh, and we got light, a brand- it's Life Day. Life Day. And it's we the same day brand- that the original holiday special aired way back in 1979, which was before it was hidden in the duffel bag and then <laughs> beaten yeah. by sticks. Uh, so we had a brand new trailer for the Lego Star Wars holiday special today. Uh, they revealed a little bit more about how this film will work. Let's take a look. It's uh, The big thing here is um, it's time travel, folks. It's time travel. And I don't think it's, it's this, is, this is not canon. No, no, no. It's it's like Lego oh, nonsense. That was, like this, is, this is like robot chicken for children. This is there was, there was a... I was going to say real quick, there there was a mild time travel, like sort of subplot element that they rolled into Rebels. It was different than this. This is Ray finds a crystal that allows her to visit people from throughout Star Wars history. It's a a, a wonderful excuse to kit bash everyone together in one sort of cinematic experience. I'm I'm so excited. I was honestly like kind of like, it it looks fine, whatever. I'll watch it. And then this trailer came out. I'm like, this looks really fun. This looks like a really just good, silly, fun, wonderful time. Mm -hmm. It's also like, I don't know, I it's easy to look at Lego CGI and I say this about the games, but every time they also like, when are we getting the Lego Skywalker saga? When is that supposed to come out? Like, when is that, where's that game? Right. What uh, that was supposed to come out in October. Is it still coming out? What, where's the, it was, it got delayed on, I think February of next year. I, I was just saying before about how games have largely been unaffected by the coronavirus. Um, obviously that's not true. Cyber, Cyberpunk got like six delays. A bunch of other games got delayed. Uh, Skywalker saga got delayed till next year which I'm super excited for. But dude, I got to see a new animated thing today that had Max Rebo in it. Yeah, that that's good. Happy. That's good. We should be we should be happy about that. We should be celebrating that. I feel like the majority of the people in the chat have been arguing back and forth about the Xbox and the PS5 and we while we appreciate you doing that because it makes our numbers look better for this <laughs> this bad live show we do on Thursday evenings. Also, just we should just be happy that there's game stuff coming out. Like we're getting new yeah. consoles. Uh, I, yeah. I will say um, I'm very excited for the Xbox. I'm very excited for the PS5. I I think that some of you need to take a moment and appreciate uh, Lego Max Rebo. Like honestly, yeah. this is you know it's it's who kind ca- of who up. cares about the video game systems? They got the blue elephant who plays the funny piano for the big slug, and he's a little plastic man. He's doing Christmas stuff on the Millennium Falcon. I love exactly. Star Wars. I mean, you know, put put some respect on that sickly elephant keyboardist name. I don't want to hear any of this slander about the consoles in the chat. I Who's love gonna- that funny blue elephant and his big yeah, diaper. Right. He's good at jazz music. We are showing. Uh, a, a children and adult film for everyone that features a jazz elephant who's blue, who may or may not have died in an explosion. They might get into that, actually. What if they talk about that? We don't really know about how many people died in the explosion at Jawa's Palace. The cell barge? Was Max Roban on board with that? We know Bib Fortuna was probably there. R2-D2 got out of there after making all those messed up drinks for everybody that was definitely wrong. And he disappeared. You know? Bib Fortuna did didn't, make, didn't make the drinks. That was, uh, that was, the, that was Porcellus, the chef. No, R two D two made the drinks. R two D two, Bib Fortuna didn't make the drinks. Actually, no, R two D two held the drinks. He, he held the drinks. A table. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. No, obviously. I don't know. I I guess that's that's <laughs> the good thing about everything being horrible this year is that it manages to distract you from the distractions, and the distractions seem like they come sooner, and you get fun surprises. So, like the fact that we're getting, I don't know, the Mandalorian kicked off. Like we're getting a Mandalorian episode. Like I like Star Wars. I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't seen it, but I like Star Wars, and there's some it's stuff in there that I really like, and I want to see what happens. Yeah. So uh, Zach Bertuzzi says, "I can't wait for the Xbox Series X, guys." Yeah, me too. I'm excited for it. You know what? Actually, I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking at the YouTube chat right now. I'm glad you guys are fighting about the consoles. I've been watching election coverage for three years, for three days straight. Feels like three years. This is a this is beautiful. Yeah. This is- blessing this is nonsense it's That's not like real. this is roughhousing okay. you're hitting your little brother with pillows it's fine it's not a big deal you know you're not exactly. doing you guys bloody street fights at the wall nobody cares you're fighting yeah. over teraflops are you kidding me i'm, I'm not watching i'm not watching cnn right now this is amazing this is the best thing i've ever seen thank you all so much keep fighting about the consoles keep this going keep this energy going we don't have to worry about the other thing this is fantastic i'm so happy about it well ladies and gentlemen uh we just have a few minutes left in the show 
We, uh, if anybody in the in the chat has any questions for us on YouTube or Twitch, now this now's the time to throw them in there. Uh, if you want to know who our favorite Star Wars characters are, if you want to know about what our launch uh, week plans are for the new consoles, uh, if you want to know what we've been eating for the last few days, you know, I I think Max has probably been working on. What a few do I eat? Weeks. Yesterday I ate. Uh, was yesterday the really? Yesterday was the very sad day. I ate three packets of those zombie skittles that we had on the air like last week, and then I had some uh garlic some roasted garlic triscuits and if you've ever wanted to make vomit in your mouth instead of in your stomach that's how you do it you do those things back to back it was horrible really bad flavors um <sighs> let's see uh kratos 70 says what's your favorite toy you have behind you on that shelf um for me it's probably oh, man there's so many um but the one i have dead center is the uh dengar that I got the original kind of Dengar from Return of the Jedi. So it was the first Star Wars toy I had. So I blame a special him one. for everything that grew around it. So he's 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 dead center there. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Um, let's see. Do you guys know when Godzilla vs Kong is coming out? We do actually. We were talking about that a little Spoiler, bit earlier. It's November, October it, next year. What it, is it? I forget. May, I can't remember. First, 2021. May. Okay, but we don't have a trailer for that. So, I mean, if they're going to delay it not. sooner, you know. We do not. Better question is, when's the trailer coming out? Because you can get excited for that. Because whenever the actual movie comes out, that's a whole big question mark. But, man, uh, Michael Michael Ulysses in the chat has just been, like, writing Henry Cavill fanfic. Like, he's been doing, he's been doing, like, Henry Cavill, Chuck Norris jokes, but about PC gaming, which is honestly, like, pretty funny. Um, that's That's good. Yeah, I saw that. I saw a pretty funny meme, which was like the it's like the stars of the DCU with their children, and it was like you know Gal Gadot and her daughter, and like Ben, you know Ben Affleck with his kids, and then it was just like Henry Cavill like holding his like GPU. <laughs> this is yeah, <laughs> gay, gamer dude. Um, yeah, should we wind things down? I think I want to go do a, a a nice birthday treat or something. Yes, please do. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give a happy happy birthday. Happy birthday. In the best day, to Max best day. Uh, and thank you to the uh, almost a uh, thousand concurrent uh, viewers we had today on the show. Super fun stream. Hey, you got a you got a cake coming your way. <laughs> actually, can, you, can you can you open your mouth? Like you cake. Cake. It's right in your face. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh! It's just get um, get it right in there. That's how so, I eat. I eat the whole cake at once, and I dissolve it in my mouth like a fly. It's actually the cake that uh, Alexio made for my birthday, so it says "Happy Birthday, Brain." But you know what? You're smart. <laughs> Thanks. I, people people always do call me Brain. I count them. <laughs> Can't even say with a straight face. <laughs> no one's ever called me that. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Up at noon. Uh, good luck with the world this week. It's it's a lot. Um, play video games. Hang out. Good luck with the console wars. That's coming up next week. Uh, be nice to your uh, friends, your brothers and sisters on planet Earth, uh, everybody, and uh, wish Max a happy birthday, because it's this is a weird year to celebrate. And don't ever do that with your hands again, because it doesn't look good. I don't know, yeah, it's a good point. Someone's <laughs> gonna Photoshop all sorts of hot dogs in there, that's no good. <laughs> <laughs> good night, and we love you, we'll see you next week. Bye. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.